the final talk of, of the session is uh, MAPS, a multi-aspect personalized point of interest recommender system. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ramesh Baral. I'm a PhD student at Florida International University, Miami, Florida. And today I'm going to present my paper, Multi-Aspect Personalized Poet Recommender System. So lots of papers, topics in the contextual uh, domain. So before going to the actual uh, problem, let's see how uh, we deal with the problem in the location-based social network. So I will introduce a little bit about the LBSN. LBSN is a special kind of social network that has the uh, information about the location, uh, check-in information, and uh, many uh, multimedia inf information floating around. So this kind of information gives us the advantage of uh, getting the user similarity graph, as we can see on the right side of the uh, uh, slide over here, and the location similarity graph that we can see over here. So we use the advantage of this uh, LBSN data and we do try to do the efficient location recommendation. So main objective of this paper is to have the efficient location recommendation. And there are many challenges uh, when we try to work in the location uh, recommendation. For instance, the user check-in matrix is often sparse. So it's uh, really difficult to get the enough information from just the uh, rating matrix. Also, we don't have the explicit information from the user profile because users uh, mostly don't will to share their uh, information like the age preferences. So we need to get the, those information implicitly from other informations. And also we can see that there are uh, researches that show that most of the people are just willing to share few information or they don't share information at all. Uh, the cold start problem is always there in the recommendation system. Yeah, and, and here is also one of the major challenges. So besides uh, having these challenges, is there any uh, way that we can address uh, to get the efficient recommendation? And in this paper, we uh, fuse those aspects like the uh, check-in time, location category, uh, social relation, and the location distance into a recommendation model. And we claim that this gives a better recommendation in comparison to other uh, models. Uh, to go to the uh, actual uh, motivation, let's see the first factor, the geographical factor. Uh, it's uh, simple and intuitive to see that the users always prefer the near locations uh, in comparison to the locations that are far. Similarly, the temporal popularity of a location has a significant impact. Uh, let's say, for an example, if a user is uh, willing to go to bar, then it doesn't make sense to recommend the bar uh, somewhere in the afternoon. It makes sense if you recommend the bar at the evening or at uh, night. Similarly, the temporal check-in behavior of the user. Users might have some tendency to visit some locations in some time of the day. Uh, the location category, oh, sorry. Uh, the location category and the influence of the users in the network uh, of that user also play a significant role in the recommendation. So uh, let's see an example. Here we can see the user U1 has uh, three options to go for tea or coffee. And we can easily see that the, due to the special influence, the user will prefer this one, because this one is nearest rather than uh, these other two locations. Similarly, due to the categorical influence, uh, there can be other locations which provide similar kind of service. And the user might be interested to visit that location too. Due to the temporal influence, there can be some location which can be recommended to the user at nearly at the same time of the day, and the user might be willing to visit that place. There is another uh, aspect called the social aspect. Uh, due to the social relation between those, those two users, uh, the user might be willing to visit the places that are already visited by uh, his or her friend. So the methodology that we use is to have a location as the node of a graph with the user and the check-in time as the attributes. And we use the personalized page rank to compute the rank of the uh, locations, uh, incorporating the categorical and the spatial constraints, which will be clear in the next slide. And we also introduce the time constraint and the social constraint in our model. Here we can see the example of uh, a small portion of a graph. The Categorical constraint in the upper portion of the graph shows that the locations are connected only if they are of 
uh, same uh, category. And in the lower one, we can see that if the locations are within certain threshold distance, then only they are connected. This is the categorical rank relation that we have in our model. Uh, here we can see that this is simply a, a rank computation, uh, an extension of the page rank. And the personality are, is uh, defined by this beta t1, t2l. So here we can see beta t1, t2l is the personalization of this location within this time frame, t1 and t2. Uh, and it is just the combination of the popularity of that location within that time frame divided by the popularity of all the locations of the same category within that time frame. Plus, popularity of that category, the category of the location, divided by popularity of all the locations in the data set. Similarly, the spatial rank is uh, defined by the personalization, spatial personalization. We can define theta t1, t2l as the spatial personalization, which is simply the popularity of this location within this time frame, t1, t2, divided by all the locations that are near to that locations, uh, the uh, popularity of those near locations, plus popularity of all the near locations among the popularity of all the locations in the data set. So we just use the frequency of those uh, combinations to get the ranking of the uh, locations. After getting the categorical and the spatial rank, we use the uh, unified model, uh, some weighted linear combination of those two ranks to get the unified model, which is just a, a combination of those two uh, ranks. And we use those uh, computed rank to define the recommendation relation for this user for that location within this time frame. So it's just the popularity of the, that location within this time frame plus the distance uh, popularity. I mean the popularity of the locations that are nearby this location. Uh, popularity of all the locations that are of the same category as this location. And the popularity of the locations that were visited by the friends of this user. So we have the spatial aspect, categorical aspect, and the social aspect. And the temporal aspect is always there in our relations. And these terms are the uh, weights that are defined using the TF-IDF. And uh, for detail, we can, uh, you can check in our paper about those terms. So we use the Goala and the WePlaces data set. Those data sets are well defined, have a quite a number of, a good number of check-ins and some other relevant information that are required for our model. Uh, it might be strange to see that the uh, distance of a location is not like the random factor that we introduced in our model. From analysis of the data set, we can see that as the distance of the location increases, the probability of checking to that location decreases. That means the users prefer the near locations. We use the five-fold cross-validation, top five, 10, 15 uh, highest recommendation scores were considered, and we use the damping factor of 0 0.85. For categorical model, first term in the relation was weighted 0.75, and the second was 0.25. Similarly, for a special model, the first term was 0.75 weighted, and the second was 0.25. For a unified model, categorical aspect had just 0.25 weight. So we can see the result uh, in comparison to the other relevant models. The maps performs well in terms of uh, F score. And this SLM and CLM are the categorical link model with only the categorical aspect. SLM, special link model with only the special aspect. And when these two models are combined, we get the maps. So these two are, these three are actually our model. And this gives the idea like how maps perform so well in comparison to other models. So to conclude that uh, talk, we introduced the geographical, the categorical, temporal, and the social aspects in the recommendation relation. And we got the good result in comparison to the existing models. And the next direction that we are trying to focus is to fuse other aspects. There are many other aspects in the uh, LBS and data. And we're also trying to think uh, to introduce the same model in other domains. I'd like to uh, thank anonymous reviewers, the Rexis committee, all the funding providers. That's all. Thank you. Question? Can you comment more maybe on scalability and sort of computational complexity of the method and uh, yeah. maybe in so, comparison to you know, some baselines? And uh -huh. So these uh, baselines are actually, they are also context-aware recommendation models. They fuse 
just one or two additional aspects behind the second frequency. And in comparison to those, it's, uh, I think it, this, this model should be scalable because we don't have that much uh, complex relation. We just use the uh, frequency of the seconds for the uh, particular location and the location category. So here we can see the relation is just simple, just frequency of the seconds. Here also frequency of seconds. So I think uh, it should scale well for some millions of uh, seconds. We also had some millions of seconds in our data set, so I think it will scale well. Sorry. Great, great presentation. Um, Thank you. Can you please explain a little bit about the weights that you're using for any, um, every contextual feature? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you for the question. So you mean these weights, right? Yeah, so these words are actually defined using the TF-IDF relation. That means term frequency, inverse document frequency. And these are also uh, defined based on the uh, frequency of the seconds that are like within the nearest distance. So that, that gives the weight to the uh, nearest distance. This gives the weight to the nearest distance. This gives weight to the, uh, like the locations that are of the same category. So this is also totally dependent on the frequencies of the uh, uh, location tokens that are available in the data set. So we define those more detailly in our paper. Other questions? Uh, uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, do you, do you have any reason uh, you did not use uh, some kind of topping modeling or, or matrix factorization uh -huh. to model your uh, user's cat preference to category. Uh, yeah, that's, that's also a nice question. Thank you for the question. So we have another paper uh, with this, some kind of uh, fusion of the aspects using the matrix factorization, and that's in another venue. And we also got a good result using the matrix factorization. Uh, uh, regarding the topic modeling, I, I think that that's also a good, uh, good point because the reviews of the locations are kind of really useful for the uh, popularity, getting the popularity of the locations. So currently we don't have the, those aspects uh, and we plan to use those aspects, aspects in the future work. Thank you. All right, so this concludes the session. Thank you very much.